we've seen everything that's happening in the South and all the work that King had done in the South, but now he's gonna come here and make it better. Chicago, to this day, if you had an opportunity, I don't know how long you'll be here to see the neighborhood. It was, it was, it was still very, uh, let me back up just a minute. Sears and Robux, uh, main catalog and building was an anchor for employment on that in Lawndale. And so the store was there, the warehouse and all of that was there. There were plenty of jobs and opportunity around. There were, the, the Roosevelt Road was teeming with stores, mostly owned by, uh, the, the properties were probably owned by other groups, but black run and owned stores were there. You could get your watch fixed, you could buy music, you could go to the grocery store. There was just a lot of, just bustling with things. And so when Key came, uh, he walked the neighborhoods, he talked about housing. One of my friends, grandmothers, who just recently died, Josephine McCord, actually cooked for him, worked with Al Raby. So we knew that he was in town. My mother would not allow, uh, excuse me, I have a sinus, that's what you're hearing. Uh, my mother would not allow us to go out. She was like, it's too dangerous if something happens. But for the most part, it was peaceful in my immediate area. When he went to Barkhead Park, not so. When he went to uh, Cicero, not so. And so he eventually, he, he had gone to uh, Soldier Field. And uh, so we were aware of what was going on, but no one in my family, not my mom, uh, I can't really think of anyone in my immediate family that was involved, but my, there's a church that's not far from my house in uh, Stone Temple where he spent most of his time and he lived right there on uh, 15th and, and Hamlin, which is not far. In fact, my uncle in Havana house not, found, not far from there. So uh, he was so well beloved, particularly on the west side of the city, among west side blacks in particular, because south side blacks at this point, in terms of the religious community, had said, we don't want him over here. He's going to make it, he's going to be disruptive. It's going to be a problem. And so on the west side is where he was most Embrace. Of course, the city, uh, the mayor, Richard Daly, the first Daly, did not want him here at all. So uh, when he died, uh, when he was killed, uh, I can't remember exactly where I was, but I remember us all crying, just crying, crying, crying. But we went to school the next day. And you could tell there was tension. And so I fashioned myself, this might get a little strange, as this dancer. I was not an activist. I was concerned and, you know, about what was going on. And I knew that I had to make a difference, but I was only doing it local, like taking kids to the park and doing that stuff, but not, uh, or to the museums. Because the other, our mom was not the same, that the other moms were doing what my mom was doing. And so, I never thought that I would be, well, I was on the stage, I'll tell you about it. I was a freshman in high school, and there's something that my high school put on, John Marshall High School, called the Jamboree. And I'm on the stage because my friends and I had made the dance team. You had to audition, and then you perform in front of the school. It's about 2,000 students. I'm going to just really show them how much I could dance. And I can tell you today, I was on my way to being a shake dancer. That's because if the music went this way, my body went that way. And I was just excited. This man walks into the gym. We're practicing. And he, the doors fly open. And he says, scooters are over the, uh, the spotlight 20, it was spotlight 68 is canceled. That was the name of the jamboree. And I'm on the stage. I'm like, why? He said, the west side is burning. And then I said, you mean postponed? Because I'm still thinking, I'm going to dance. And he's like, no, there's no school. The west side is burning. You have to go home. And so we make our way home. It's just all of this turmoil. And my mom, all she could do is try to keep us in, keep us safe. And we could look out. And if we went out, we went out with her. The street was full of... Um, uh, armed military, 
uh, police officers, uh, the mayor actually ordered a shoot to kill order uh, because the west side was an old, beautiful neighborhood. He ordered that the trees be cut down because they could not, we're talking about 50 year old trees. So if you went to my neighborhood now, some blocks only have four trees on them to, to this day. So uh, the street burn, people did go in and take things. Some of it was out of survival. When I say survival, like milk, there were, first of all, there were no really good city services. You could wait for two weeks and your garbage would not be picked up. If you have garbage and you have people, you have rats. And so there, were, there was always a housing issue, and that's what King came to town for. So that was a challenge. So um, after that, I came home and for weeks watched the rebellions around the country on television. And I decided that day, I'm going to be just like Thurgood Marshall. I'm going to work for civil rights. And so uh, um, each time thereafter, uh, the next time I really got, I was really active in school around human rights and rights kinds of issues. Uh, when Fred Hampton and Martin Clark were killed, as ordered, ordered by the then state's attorney, Richard Ilbane, uh, and Ed Henry Hayden, whoever else was involved in that, we marched out of school. One of my classmates said, we're all leaving. And the school emptied. And we walked over to the house where he had been killed. And we could walk in because they had not secured the place. Because at that time, the police, um, this is past the Cape years. This, so by this time, I'm 16, uh, the rebellions. This is, by now, I'm 16 years old. And I'm just seeing that back-to-back, -back, you know, that assassination of, Malcolm and you know all this other stuff is going on so we walk out or we walk through this place and we see where these over 100 shots went into this bedroom killed this man in the bed they were in twilight of the morning it was it just said I to the core of me that's the day the activist was born I said we can't do this you know we, we just can't do this so uh, we have to do something about it and I think the police was so dismissive they, they thought that nobody would contest their version of the story, but the family persisted and they eventually won a, a substantial uh, suit. But all they really wanted was for, the, for them to admit this was murder. This was an ordered assassination by the government. So. Yeah, one of, in, in terms of police violence, um, one of the things we read about was that, like, obviously there was a lot of police violence in black communities like before 1968, but then with the um, DNC riots um, in August of 1968, like it became publicized because white people were beaten by police and yes. it was like the first time. Yes. And so we're kind of wondering like how, like even now with police violence, like how that like feels and living in that time, how that feels where you know that people aren't held accountable for their actions. And like, like does, does that like bring back, you know, kind of this like, feeling of I have to do something? Absolutely. Uh... 